SpaceX has recently been making rapid progress with their new prototype rocket, Starship. In fact, with the recent S9 launch, if you look closely, you can actually spot S10 waiting to be launched next. Clearly, SpaceX has been pumping out Starship after Starship, and at this point, it actually seems like the regulation and testing process is their main bottleneck, as opposed to the actual construction process. So, how does SpaceX manage to develop and build Starship rockets so quickly? Well, starting off, the first major obstacle when it comes to building a rocket is sourcing funding. We don't know if SpaceX is actually profitable themselves, as they don't release their financial reports like public companies. It's possible that they are in a position where they can choose profitability. However, I suspect that they take all of the profits from commercial launches and put it back into research and development. Considering that SpaceX is by far the most popular commercial launch provider, it's likely that they divert a lot of these profits to Starship. Aside from internal profitability, SpaceX has spent nearly two decades at this point proving their ability to innovate and their reliability. As a result, it's very easy for SpaceX to raise more money whenever they need. Just last week, reports suggested that SpaceX raised another $850 million with a massive valuation of $74 billion. Something else to keep in mind is that the founder and majority stakeholder is of course Elon Musk, who is hovering between richest and second richest person in the world. So, investors into SpaceX really don't have to fret about SpaceX going bankrupt. Worst case scenario, Elon will just go ahead and liquidate a bunch of Tesla shares to keep SpaceX afloat. As you can see, SpaceX may be profitable themselves. They have a proven track record and they have massive investor credibility. Thus, for all realistic purposes, they have unlimited funding power. But just because they have so much funding doesn't mean that they are careless with it. And that brings us into SpaceX's choice of material with Starship. For the entirety of our space exploration history, virtually all major rockets have used aluminum, titanium, or some sort of carbon composite. This was originally going to be the case with Starship as well. But at the beginning of 2019, SpaceX decided that stainless steel was actually a better choice for a variety of reasons, starting with, of course, cost. Elon Musk explains that carbon fiber costs $135 per kilogram, and unfortunately, 25% of that is usually wasted in the construction process. So, each kilogram of carbon fiber that ends up making its way onto the final rocket actually costs upwards of $200. Meanwhile, stainless steel only costs $3 per kilogram. Aside from the obvious cost savings, this is extremely beneficial because it allows SpaceX to experiment much more freely. Instead of running simulations on a computer where unknown variables don't play a factor, SpaceX can go ahead and just run a real-life pressure test till failure. Evidently, the extremely cheap material choice allows SpaceX to run more tests, collect more real data, and rapidly improve as mistakes don't cost them an intolerable amount. Moving on, stainless steel is also much more durable than carbon fiber. Elon Musk revealed that aluminum and carbon fiber are generally able to withstand 150 to 180 degrees Celsius. You might be able to push it to 200 degrees Celsius, but that's generally the limit. With stainless steel on the other hand, Musk suggests that it is capable of temperatures up to 120 to 870 degrees Celsius. This is again quite important, as rockets need to be able to handle very high and very low temperatures during flight. Moreover, if you guys remember, one of the most serious issues with constructing and refurbishing a space shuttle was the heat shield. Every single heat shield tile had to be individually inspected and repaired. This was especially time intensive and tedious because the space shuttle had over 21,000 heat shield tiles. Conversely, since Starship's exterior itself is much more capable of higher temperatures, SpaceX doesn't have to pay nearly as much attention towards heat concerns. Elon Musk has even suggested that transpiration-based cooling may be enough to keep Starship cool. In such a system, Starship would have two exterior stainless steel layers, and water or cooling liquid would flow between the two sandwich layers. This system is no doubt much easier than installing thousands of heat shield tiles, which brings down the construction time quite substantially. Next up, we have SpaceX's actual construction process itself. Usually, rockets are constructed in extremely clean environments with large dedicated machinery that takes care of a lot of the work. Though this is quite helpful, this also adds a lot of work. Engineers not only have to design and maintain the rocket itself, but they also have to design and maintain the machine that builds a rocket. Similarly, the rocket company will not only have to fund the rocket itself, but also the machines that assemble and construct various rocket parts. With Starship, however, this is not the case. SpaceX doesn't use large molding machines or huge 3D printers to produce parts for Starship. Really, the production process is just making a bunch of stainless steel rings, a couple of flaps, and a nose cone. And, as for the construction, most of the construction takes place in broad daylight exposed to all of the elements. 
Prototypes often endure rain, high winds, and even tropical storms as Boca Chica is right next to the ocean. Also, aside from the massive cranes that are used to move and lift components, there's absolutely no fancy machinery. It's literally just a bunch of guys welding together stainless steel rings out in the open. SpaceX doesn't even take advantage of spiral welding because the exterior wall of Starship isn't uniformly thick. So, SpaceX is straight up launching prototypes that are hand welded together. Though there are some safety concerns regarding this construction process, as it is thus far unclear how durable such rockets are, this rudimentary production and construction process no doubt cuts down overall manufacturing time significantly. Another major method SpaceX utilizes to shorten development and manufacturing time is iteration. SpaceX has been a huge fan of the iterative design process, and this has saved them insurmountable time. Here's the thing, most companies in any industry will segment out the development process. For instance, if we're looking at the airline industry, Boeing will first go ahead and fully design an airplane. This process often takes years. Next, they'll construct it, test it, and fix any issues. If everything goes well, they'll mass produce it and sell it to the airlines. Maybe a few years later, they'll go back and modify certain things about the airplane, and create a version 2, and version 3, and so on and so forth. Between each of these versions though, every single airplane that comes out of Boeing is identical. With SpaceX on the other hand, no two rockets they produce are identical. SpaceX doesn't try to get it perfect on the first try, and they definitely don't wait to make future iterations until they get it perfect. With Starship, SpaceX has taken this philosophy to the next level. They think of a design, they put it together as fast as possible, and they launch. If it works, that's great, they'll focus on how to make it even better. If it doesn't work, that's fine too, they didn't spend too much time and manpower on the launch anyways. By employing this aggressive development process, SpaceX is able to rapidly filter through what works and what doesn't work. Musk has confessed that this occasionally results in massive setbacks for the company. However, he has also suggested that SpaceX is willing to tolerate such losses in order to embrace the iterative design process. Once Starship becomes a commercial rocket that people actually use on a regular basis, SpaceX will no longer be able to use this approach as the stakes would be too high. Considering this, SpaceX is determined to take full advantage of the iterative process while they still can. And a plethora of prototypes is simply a byproduct of this approach. Anyways, before we get to the final and most significant factor driving forward Starship development, we have one more smaller reason, which is competition. Now, I understand that SpaceX is way ahead of the competition. However, I think a major reason for that is the actual existence of competition. NASA has stagnated for decades, and one of the key reasons for this is that the US is no longer competing against Russia. I know many of you guys think Blue Origin is a joke, but really, Jeff Bezos is not a joke by any means. He built one of the largest and most successful companies in the world, Amazon. And now, he's stepping down to fully focus on Blue Origin. Considering this and their plans with New Glenn, I wouldn't fully write off the competition just yet. But more than all of these reasons, the primary reason SpaceX is able to build Starship so quickly is because they are on a constant time crunch. The truth is, Elon Musk is running out of time. And I'm not talking about running out of funding or losing commercial customers to Blue Origin or anything business related. Rather, Elon Musk is actually running out of lifetime. Hopefully, we all live into our 80s and 90s and even past 100. But life is unpredictable and Elon Musk is already about to turn 50 this summer. It took SpaceX nearly 20 years just to get people to the International Space Station. And though that is an outstanding achievement, there is still so much work left in actually getting to Mars. At this rate, Mars is simply not going to happen within his lifetime. Elon Musk has even gone on record stating that this is what concerns him most. Well, the thing, that, the thing that concerns me most right now is that unless we improve our rate of innovation dramatically, then there is no chance of a base on the moon or a city on Mars. Not, I'll be lucky. Yeah, this is my biggest concern. With that being said, Elon Musk is genuinely concerned that SpaceX won't make it within his lifetime. As a result, he's willing to do anything that's not illegal or puts people in danger to expedite the development process. If that means building a plethora of prototypes by working 24-7 and blowing several of them up during testing, that's completely fine. At this point, the only things that matter to him are the rate of innovation at SpaceX and safety, nothing else. Though that is a rather dark source of motivation, the fear of death is a very powerful force, and this likely plays a strong role in Starship's rapid development process. In the end, there are several objective factors that are pushing forward Starship development at unprecedented rates. SpaceX has wisely chosen a great material, crafted a simple construction process, and they have employed an aggressive development strategy. On top of this, 
they also have essentially unlimited funding and respectable competition nudging them forward. But the biggest factor launching Starship development to Mars is that Elon Musk is on a time crunch, and he is determined to reach Mars before it's too late. When do you guys think SpaceX will reach Mars? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys hope that Elon Musk will be able to fulfill his dream. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.